Matthew 4, 19. And he said unto them, that is Jesus said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. This morning I'm going to be speaking to you on the theme, making disciples. As you have seen, Jesus commanded us to make disciples. We are commanded to preach the gospel. We are commanded to evangelize. We are commanded to witness to other people so that they too can come to know the Lord. In Matthew 28, verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are commanded to make disciples. But as you can see, first of all, we are commanded to follow. When you follow, You'll be like Jesus when you sit at the feet of Jesus and be conformed to his image. Then you go and make disciples. You go and you come back and you sit at his feet and you make disciples. You go and you come back. The purpose of discipleship of Making disciples, the purpose of discipleship is to give glory to God through his Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is possible for a man to appear to be like a Christian and yet he's not a Christian. A Christian is a man who has been crucified with Christ, died with him, buried with him, and is risen with him. A Christian, a man who undergoes this mystical process, is what we call born again. When he comes out at the other end, after going through this principle, he's a new creation. He is born again of the spirit man. The natural man is born of the flesh, is born of Adam. But the spiritual man, the Christian, is a man that is born of the second Adam. Is a man that is born of Jesus. And how do you become born? of Jesus is by being crucified with him. You know, these words that I'm using now, the, the, the New Testament is filled with it. But you never hear them. It's regrettable that you never hear these words on the pulpit. And this is the center of Christianity. This is it. But you never hear it on the pulpit. All what you hear, they are the peripherals. They are the other strange things, money, prosperity, and all of that. You 
You know, people believe the Christian religion for the following reasons. Generally, people don't have problems with the Christian religion. And the reason why they don't have problems is because they think that Christianity has a high moral value. In fact, the whole world would agree if you were to vote. The, the whole world would agree. If there's any religion that all of us sh should become so that the world can move in peace, it is the Christian religion. It is the Christian In fact, with all the laws and all that, they don't even mind that. They, they see that it is good for you to worship God. It is good for you not to steal. It is good not to commit adultery. It is good not to commit fornication. In fact, there are medical reasons, psychological reasons why you should not do all of these things. Today, you don't need to tell you don't need to counsel a young man about fornication. Because each time you are involved in fornication, there is the risk. Of contracting venereal disease. Gonorrhea. Syphilis. All kinds of diseases. HIV. So any young man or woman who is doing any, getting into any of these things, you have to contend with all of this. And in fact, parents are afraid for their children, for their teenage children, or even young adults. They are afraid for them. I hope my son will not contact this disease. I hope my daughter will not have HIV. The way I'm seeing her moving. So people are convinced about all of these things. And that is exactly what Christianity presents. On, in fact, on the surface, let me, if, if I can say so. They believe, they believe it, that it has a high moral value. Number two, they believe that... <clears throat> It's exalted teaching about what to do and what not to do. That Christianity presents this perfectly. What a man should do in his life in order to be happy. What not to do and what to do. What to do and what not to do. The Christian religion presents it perfectly about anxiety, about worries, about all of that. It does present it. And everybody trumps high for Christianity compared to all the other religions. They believe in its intellectual and philosophical content. That when it comes to the uh, intellectual reasoning, when it comes to uh, the, the, the philosophy of Christianity or the psychology of Christianity, it is perfect. It's a masterpiece. No religion can beat it. They also believe, number four, the rich history of the Christian religion. There is no religion that is as documented as the Christian religion. Some of the stories that you read in the Bible that you take for granted, in some of those other books, some of, some of those historical books of those nations in Syria and all those nations, that they cannot even find them anywhere. It's not even in their archives. They can't find them in their museums. They cannot corroborate it. It is well documented. But for the Bible, there's no way they would have known all of these things. There's no way people would have known the beginning of the world.
the miracles. The miracles in the Bible. They believe it. They are not Christians. They believe it. Even in the Quran, it is there that Jesus did miracles. In fact, far more miracles. Some of the miracles that are written in the Quran that Jesus did. They believe all of these things. And to them, Christianity is the number one religion. But there's one thing they hate. There's one thing, all of these things that I have enumerated here. To them, wow. It is a wow for Christianity. But there's one thing that they hate. And they hate it to the uttermost. And because of this one thing alone, They have thrown Christianity out of the window because of this one thing alone. And it is this. Christ and him crucified. The blood. They hate it. We don't like that aspect of it. We don't want it. We like the teachings of Jesus. Many of them say, but this apostle Paul, he came I just spoiled the whole teaching. He brought all of this uh, mystical, uh, m- m- this mystical thing about Jesus, about crucified, about the blood of Jesus, about sacrifices. We don't like that. We don't want it. But that is the center. That is what we believe. That is where the power is. Without the blood. You know, Jacob loved the coat of many colors, but he did not like the blood. He did not like the blood. He made the coat of many colors for his son, Joseph. But when they came, when the other sons of Joseph, the other sons of Jacob, the brothers of Joseph, when they brought the coat of many colors to him, soaked in blood, he broke down and wept. But that is the center. The foundation upon which everyone must build. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. That is what we preach. The preaching, preaching It's not about Moses. It's not about Abraham. It's not about Isaac. It's not about Jacob. Preaching is about the blood. The word preaching is directly, inextricably connected with the blood of Jesus. If you are hearing, if you are hearing anything short of the blood of Jesus, then that is not preaching. That is what you call lecturing. You can lecture about anything you want to lecture about. But when it comes to preaching, the word preaching is directly connected to talking about the blood of Jesus, what Jesus did. That is what we preach. This is what they hate. So what do we do about it? What do we as Christians do about this? Throw it away as well? Because we want to please the world, Because we want to make them happy. Throw it away as well. No. Or do we neglect it? This is the bone of contention. 
we will preach it. Let there be war. We do not want peace at all costs. If it has to bring war, then we are ready to go to war for this reason. The blood of Jesus cleanses all your sin and my sin. Without the blood of Jesus, we are dead in our sins. But thank God, we are alive. Amen, somebody. And we will preach it. We will speak it. Until we can no longer speak. Even as we are dying, we will still murmur those words. The blood the blood of Jesus that is the center amen somebody now as children of God as members of this church you know what God had done before the foundation of the world to this present time to save you and me. What God kept secret, but somehow He revealed it to you. What was secret, what was a mystery, God revealed it to you. Romans 16 25. Now to Him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith God has revealed it to you what was done before the foundation of the world? Nobody, you were not conscious at that time. We were in what we might call the unconscious state. We were not conscious. We were not known. We didn't know ourselves at that time. When God decided to take you and put you in Christ Jesus. So that the election can be sure. So that nothing can change it. Amen. He chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1, 4. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love God has loved you before before everything came to being before you know what is good or what is bad before you have before even you committed fornication before you lied before having done any good or, or evil when you were not even in your mother's womb God took you and put you in Christ Jesus Oh no. And put you there in Christ Jesus so that your salvation can be sure. So that there will be no shaking. You will ask me, Tali, tell me why did God put me in that subconscious state in Christ Jesus? Before the foundation of the world. Why did he do it? I don't know. He did it for his own pleasure. He did it for his own pleasure. What I'm saying is that you know these things, don't you? You already know these things. And that's what I just said. When God did that 
before the foundation of the world and put you in Christ Jesus, you see, that's the beginning of, as we said before, that's the beginning of grace. That's the origin of your, of the grace of God upon you. You didn't do anything and God put you there. What is grace? Unmerited favor. I didn't merit it. I didn't work for it. I didn't even know about it. Maybe if I knew, I would have begged God, put my name, put my name, as we Nigerians do, beg them. But you didn't make any move, nothing. You were not conscious of yourself. Read the scripture. You know this is what God did on your behalf. You knew it. You are not ignorant of it. You are in Father's house. You are a member of Father's house. This is Father's house Bible church. This is not mother's church. This is not uncle's church. This is not cousin's church. Or this is not brother's church. This is Father's house Bible church. And you know this thing. You know it. And you are seeing it. It's not a least doctrine. You know it. You can see the same doctrine in Ephesians in First Peter 1 2. You can see it. Number two. You know what God did before the foundation of the world? Number two, you know how you were crucified with Christ. You know it. I am crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You know this, don't you? You know it. There are other scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2.2, there are many other scriptures. I've just written a few scriptures already because you know these things. 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Christ and him crucified. For this reason, you see, that's what I was saying, that preaching is connected with the blood, crucified. He said, when I came to you to preach, when I came to you to talk to you about God, I didn't want to know whether there is a tree in your compound. I didn't want to know about your account in the bank. I don't want to know, even if you are sick, even if you have cancer, I don't want to know. What I wanted to know is this. Have you been crucified with Christ? A man has to be born again before cancer kills him. A man has to be born again first. There's first thing first before he will be healed of cancer. Before God will heal him. That's what the apostle Paul is saying. He said, I determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. You know these things already. Number three. You already know how you died with him. You know it. Romans 6, 8 to 11. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more. And death had no dominion over him. You know these things, that I died with Christ. You know that we are buried with him. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. Colossians 2, 12. Buried with him in baptism. The word baptism there, as you know, is buried with him by the secret work of the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says that we are all baptized into one body, which is the body of Christ. By who? By the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit. By that same Spirit. So the word baptism there is describing the work of the Holy Spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit binds the husband and the wife and the two will become 
one. The husband and wife will become one. It is the secret work of the Holy Spirit. So when you are breaking that bond, they know what you are doing. When you break that bond of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit brought together, your wife may look stupid, your husband may look stupid, but remember, God put you together. If you are planning to divorce your wife or planning to divorce your husband, think well. Because the Holy Spirit put you together. And don't come and ask me because I'm not the Holy Spirit. Don't come and ask me, Tali, should I divorce or not? I am not the Holy Spirit. I didn't put you together. I don't have the power to, to put asunder what God has put together. So we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit. Even if your spouse commits adultery. Yes, that's what Jesus said. Except for adultery. You can. But even then, if you still want to forgive, you still, have you, you still forgive. But then you have the right to do it. But we don't always do what we have the right to do. We don't always do that. So, you still need to ask God, Lord, look at my wife has committed adultery. My husband has committed adultery. I know I have the right to divorce him, to divorce her. Well, Lord, what do you think I should do? The secret work of the Holy Spirit. You know, many times we underrate the Holy Spirit. Buried with him, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Resurrected with him. You find that also in Ephesians 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Look at the love, has loved us, is in past tense. Loved us from the foundation of the world. Loved us before the foundation of the world of the world. Even when we were dead in sin, he loved us. Had quickened us together. The word quicken is the power of the Holy Ghost with Christ by grace he has saved and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us to Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and are not of your, yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ. Look at that statement, verse 10. Are you dumb? Am I dumb? Look at what it says. For we are his workmanship. We are. Who is the we? Children of God. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Which God had before. What is that before? Before the foundation of the world ordained that we should walk in them. You know all of these things. You know, again, the mystery that God kept secret before the foundation of the world. But he revealed it to you. All of these things that I'm talking about, God kept them secret. You know, parents, many times, they tell things to their children. It is for this reason that Jesus spoke in parables. Parables.
Bibles are not meant to make the word easy. No, they are meant to make it ambiguous. They are meant to conceal it so that you are hearing the parable but you cannot decipher it. You cannot get it. So Jesus spoke in parables as it was written. He spoke in parables and the Pharisees who were listening, they could not get it. And the disciples will come home and ask him, Sir, we don't get you. When you are outside there speaking, preaching to these people, we can hardly understand you. But when you come home, we understand you. Can you tell us the meaning of that, with that parable? We didn't get it. And Jesus will start to explain. All of these things were kept secret. Why? Because if the devil had known that we were in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world, we were already in him. All of us, children of the, of the Lord, all over the world, billions of people down the ages, that we were all in the spiritual loins of Jesus they would not have crucified the king of love. They would not have crucified him. Because in crucifying him, they were crucifying you and crucifying me. They would not have done that. And you and I would have still been in our sins. They did not know this secret. But you know. You know it already. Don't you? Make some noise if you know what I'm talking about. You know these things. We know these things. We hold these things dearly to ourselves. We are children of God. We know our origins. We know how we came about. We know who we are in Christ Jesus. We know how we became who we are in Christ Jesus. And no shaking. We know that absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. We know that no native doctor can try it. We know that no witch can try it. We know that no principality can try it. None of them can try it because God himself has done all of these things from the foundation of the world. Don't you know these things? Then make some noise if you know these things. Maybe somebody else from the congregation would come and preach this message that I'm preaching here to show that you know these things already. You know all of these things. So the question is this. What are you waiting for? To start discipling others. If you know this secret, if it has been revealed to you, then what are you waiting? It has been proved in your life. For my life, it has been proved. I would have been dead by now. But nothing. I know that they are trying. They are doing all what they want to do in order to destroy me. Principalities and powers to bring me down. Even just as we said last Sunday, some people are so envious that they even go beyond to the occult. That man, we want to bring him out. That man must die. And they do all kinds of things. And the native doctor is telling them that, oh God, don't try I don't try. I don't try. Some of you here would have been dead many times. You know, children of the Lord, they don't believe in miracle until one hand will paralyze first. Then when they have only one hand, then they will come to the church to come and, to come and testify. Hey, don't be small. Only this hand they forget. Only this hand. But thank God, this left hand I get so. Ah, then everybody say, eh? So the native doctor therefore don't kill the man. No only one hand if he kill. But God has not even allowed them to kill one hair.
the rough one there for you. God has not allowed it. But because you are perfect, because you are in Christ Jesus, nothing, absolutely, for this reason, the Apostle Paul says, I am persuaded. He's not persuaded because of what I know. I am persuaded because of what Jesus had done on my behalf. I know it. So the question today, the, the, the sermon today is simple. Haven't known these things. And you haven't known that there are other people, there are other sons of God who are in Christ Jesus, according to Galatians 4. They are in Christ Jesus, but The fullness of their time. Though is here, but they have not had the word preached to them. They are waiting. They are sons of God, according to Galatians 4, but they don't know, they do not know that they are children of God. They don't know it. Let's go to Galatians 4. I wanted to omit this. Let me show you what I mean. Why you must make disciples. Why you must go out and tell somebody. Galatians 4 1. Look at it. He said, Now I say that the, the hair, as long as is a child. He's talking about a man who is in Christ Jesus now, but has not come to the realization, has not manifested yet. He's in Christ Jesus, but he has not answered the call, so to speak. He has not answered the altar call. He has not received Christ Jesus in his heart. But from the foundation of the world, you and I and him were created in Christ Jesus. But he has not manifested. You and I have manifested. Dali, sir, come forward. They are calling. They are calling the names one by one. One by one. One by one. Omotola, sir. Gewe, sir. Now you are waiting for your name to be called. One by one. One by one. He said, I say that the hair is talking about this man now. Who, has, who is in Christ Jesus, but has not answered the call yet. He said, as long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. What does the apostle Paul the apostle Paul uses this analogy to illustrate what I'm talking about. It's just like a little prince. A young prince of about 10 years old. He will be king when his father dies. But he's a small boy in the palace. The father is 50 and the prince it's just a, a seven-year-old boy in the palace. And in the palace, they have stewards, cooks, security men, and all of that. And this is a small boy. They beat him. Come on, put that thing down. Come on. No, no, no. Come on, put it down. They beat him. This is the king they are beating. That's what he's talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about. They beat the boy. Come and sit down there. He said, now the hair, as long as it's a child, different nothing from his servant. Though he be Lord of all. But it's under tutors. It's under the servants, governors, until the time appointed of the father. What, does, what is he talking about? You and I. But before we became born again, we are created in Christ Jesus, but 
We are Lord. You see, it's with a, a small L. Look at it. The Lord is with a little L. But we are princes. We are priests and kings with our God. Amen. And here you are in the palace. And who are these tutors, governors until the time? They are this, the principalities and powers. They tell you what to do. They force you what to do. They tell the boy, come on, drink your, drink your orange juice. It's this. Run. Sit down. Sleep. This is the king they are talking, the future king. But the boy doesn't know himself yet. So that's what happened to us before we came, before we actually received Christ into our heart. We were created in Christ Jesus. We were, we were heads to the throne. But these demons, they were, they were dealing with us anyhow. Commit, sleep with that woman, sleep with that man, steal that money, jump up, kidnap that, kidnap that, kidnap this, do this, do that. And we are obeying. Amen. That's, that's Galatians 4, verse 3. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. The elements of the world, that's what I've just said to you. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a moon, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. When the fullness of time comes, one day when the father dies, ah, this small boy that they were ordering up and down will sit on that throne. And what will happen? These same men, some of them, even older than him, he will start commanding them. He will start ordering them. You, sit down. You, get out. You, I fire you. These were people who were beating him as a small boy before. Amen, somebody. At the fullness of time, you see, we see, we see, we see all of this, their brethren who are in Christ, they are sons of God, but they did not, they don't know it, but they are there. So, and here we are, you know all of these things, you know the secret, the mystery, you know it. Then what type of person should would you be? Don't you think that it is high time for you to now go up, get up, and start telling these people? You see, you may not know who they are, but certainly those who are created in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world will of necessity respond to the preacher. You didn't hear what I said. Those who were created in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world will not be able to resist the preacher. They will, be, they will of necessity respond to it. The others will not respond because they were not created in Christ Jesus. They were not children of God. So there's no way they will respond. They are this type of people who will tell you no matter what you talk, no matter what you say, they will tell you, we don't want to hear this nonsense about the blood of Jesus. But the children of God will respond. A man who goes to fish, you put your hook, you throw it. You don't talk to the fish and say, eh, now you, I want to make you come eat the hook. <laughs> no, I'm not this thin one. I don't know. Sure, 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 sure. Now this one, now this one, now one, a white one, that way both fish when they go so. Now one may come chop the hook. Is that what you do? No. What you catch? As you catch it, sometimes if you catch uh, frog, you remove it and you throw it back. Amen, somebody. But when you catch the real fish, you take it and you put it inside your basket. That's what Jesus said. He said, follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. Which men? They are a particular people. Not all men. 
they are a particular people, those who are Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world. So the question I'm asking you this morning, when will you rise up to do all of these things? You see, it's not only for a pastor. It's not only for the pastors in this church. Already, you have the word of faith. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. Jesus himself promised, he said, I will be with you everywhere. So when will you rise up and now by faith telling people about what you have experienced and about what you know? Because you yourself, you did not just come to Christ on your own. There are one or two people who did in a dream or whatever. You had the word of faith. Somebody preached the word to you. And then, in your subconscious mind, when the word hit you, something told you. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. And immediately, you responded to the call. So, what I'm asking you this morning, when will you rise up and do this? Because now you have the key. Now you know the secret. Now you know that there are brethren outside there. Who are waiting to hear your voice. The voice of Jesus. They are waiting. Romans 1.17 It says, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It was this statement that brought revolution into the church. The just shall live by faith. When they hear the word faith in the New Testament, it means to believe. You believe in what Christ did on your behalf. Those who are created in Christ Jesus, they believe of necessity. There's something in them, there's something inborn in them that makes them believe. They just know the, the shepherd's voice. This is the voice of the shepherd. This is the call. This is my father in heaven speaking to me. They break down and they begin to cry. And strange enough, and this is why the same thing is always repeated. Anytime you see the child of God break down and crying and repenting, you will see these friends, they are laughing at him. They always laugh. My friends, they laughed. They laughed. And I looked at them. And I cried. I was crying. And they were laughing. I was crying at what I saw. I was crying because I was sorry for them. But they were laughing at me, thinking that I was stupid. What? Why is this dichotomy? It is because there's something in it in me. There's something that I'm hearing. There's something that I'm seeing. There's something that is true to me. And I am surprised that they are not seeing it. And they are laughing. And they are laughing. And with all they are laughing, I turn my back and I'm going away. I'm a changed person. I'm a new creation. They are laughing at me. I'm disappearing from their side. They are laughing at me and I'm going away. They are laughing at me and I'm going for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. Hey! I'm still going. And today, many of them They've given up laughing. Because they thought that this man will come back. He's serious. He's serious. So they don't become pastor. Not only pastor, in pastor owner, he different. He different. He really serious. He's serious. 
so. The question again. You know all of these things already. When faith comes by hearing, you must talk to them. You must preach the word. As I said, the word faith is used in the New Testament to describe believing in what Christ did. Believing in all of those things that I enumerated to you. Believing and chosen in him from the foundation of the world. Believing and be crucified with him, died with him, and buried with him, and resurrected with him. You believe all of these things. And they need to hear. You need to tell them what happened. Most of them will not believe. Because broad is the way that leads to destruction. But a few of them will believe. Those whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world, they will believe you. My sheep, they know my voice. Now look at this scripture. Hebrews 4.2 It says, For unto us was the gospel preached. Anytime you see the word preach, I've said it today again and I will say it again. The word preach in the New Testament is connected to preaching this mystery. Any other thing is lecture. Is lecture. But when it comes to preaching, it is this, the center to bring people to Christ. This is the center. Look at it, Hebrews 4 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. Who is us, Christians? Who is them, the unbelievers? He said, but the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them, but had it. In other words, when the word of God goes forth to a people, to a congregation, those who were created in Christ Jesus, the word is mixed with faith. And it goes into their heart and it causes some who? Man, it's true, I'm a sinner. Who? I must repent. The word is, it mixed with faith. But the other one, the same word, when it goes to them who are unbelievers, empty. Crucified with Christ, died with him, buried with him. <laughs> what did we do? Ah, these Christians, foolish. See us all of them, they listen. So they believe this kind of nonsense. Because, yes, it is nonsense. Because the word that came to them was not what? I didn't hear you. It was not mixed with faith. But the one that came to us was a special word. It was not just ordinary word. <laughs> you, the more you look, the less you see. It was not just a simple word. It was a word that was what? Mixed with faith. In other words, the two words as you spoke them, they just divided into two. Ordinary yama yama word. And this one, real word that is mixed with the anointing that is mixed with appeal that it makes with oh my son you are a child of god you god has given his life for you but this other one oh my son you are a child of god i gave his life for you praise the name of the lord one word is mixed with appeal and with love amen somebody and the other one with fight quarrel the word that comes to the children of God is what? Mixed with what? With faith. He said, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached 
did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. It is a question of deep calling on to deep. What do I mean by that? Deep with a capital D. And the other deep with a small d. Deep calling on to deep. Amen, somebody. The big, because all of these things, they are all mysterious. They are all in the deep. Amen. All these things I'm talking to you now. Don't you see the mystery? It's not easy to believe. That's why the world hates it. They don't want to hear it. It's deep. It's God calling unto his children. Spirit calling unto spirit. Big spirit calling unto small spirit. Amen. Comfort. <laughs> when Jesus called unto Lazarus, that's an example of deep calling unto deep. Lazarus was a friend, a personal friend to Jesus. And Lazarus died. For three days, they were trying to get Jesus to come. But Jesus purposely did not come because he wanted to give God glory. So when he got there, he said, Lazarus, three days ago, Lazarus has been dead. Three days ago. But this was, this was Jesus' friend before he died. Amen. Lazarus was already in the deep. Dead. In the grave. Dead. Lost. In another realm. But this is this deep too. Hmm. Jesus is deep. From another deep in heaven. Where is the grave? Said I be that. And he got there. Lazarus! Come forth! Deep. Calling unto. Yes, sir! And then there was Lazarus coming forth. When will you call unto deep? When? You know these things already. The word of God is in your mouth. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are a child of God. You will speak and your word will not come back to you empty. You are a fisher of men. You know, sometimes I said before that all of you here will be pastors. When will you rise up? When will you exercise the power that is in you. When will you exercise what you know? Tali, I don't have a church. You don't need to have a church like this. But you have a church where you walk. There are many people who are working with you, where you live, all over the place, your neighbors, your friends. When will you call them out of darkness? When you call and he doesn't answer, and you leave. Wash your, shake your sandals, and you leave. But you'll be surprised. You can just try one day. Get away! second time, the third time, it may not. But 
Maybe out of the ten times, three times you catch. Praise the name of the Lord. There's joy. Why is there joy in heaven over one sinner that repents? It's because now the angels, they know the secret. They know it because they are looking. They know who God has created in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. And they are watching. As you call, Sir! They will look at this one, look at that one. That's a kidnapper. This guy can never, can never answer the call. Never. He is kidnapping native doctors, juju, everything, and all that. In fact, he's a violent offender. And the angels, this one will ever answer. You see, one day. Kemote! Does anybody know one example like that? Huh? Exactly. The Apostle Paul was an example like that. I'm sure when Stephen in heaven, when he sees Paul answering the call, hey! <laughs> Stephen he will holler, Jesus! Now that man did that. <laughs> now that man that day. That man will kill me that day. Naim. Jesus said, in name day yes, yes. Look at me. In name day yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey guys, why don't we try this thing? Let's have fun. Amen, somebody. Let's experiment with it. You will see. It will work. 100%. Amen, somebody. Anytime you throw your hook in this thing, two, three, four, five times, it will catch. Amen. Many times we think that, no, they don't want to listen. This type of man can never give his life to Jesus. You know, all that one is, is like a, it's like a child. Colos uh, Galatians 4. It's like the head of the throne that you see behaving anyhow. Behaving anyhow. No, his real heart is soft. But you don't know it. When you see him, he's a kidnapper. We have seen that in this church. I don't want to ask, man. There are many brothers who were kidnappers who came to us and all that prayer, deliverance, and all that. And they are children of God. Worshiping the Lord. But when you look them on the surface, you say, I better go. Ah, I'm not going to go witness to. I don't want to witness to this prostitute, huh? Magdalene. I don't want to witness to this thief, this armed robber, this boy, this girl. I don't want to. This a prostitute. I don't want to. Just give a shout. Tina, you'll be surprised. The same person will remove the eyelashes. <laughs> they remove all the distance, everything. Jesus, let me be this, let me be this. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we begin to break down. Were you and I not like that? Yes. I'm asking, were you and I not like that? Yes, if God can save you and I, he will save any violent offender. Shall we put our hands together for the Holy Spirit?